Welcome one, welcome all to Deep Fat Fried. Oh yeah. Jiggly, jiggly Jew. I was fried fat deep. Fried fat deep. You told me that the real name of the show was a fake name and was fried fat deep. You said you lied to me. It sucks that we don't get to watch the fucking intro anymore. I mean, you could watch. I could fucking no more share. get no more get myself could, hyped up on the intro. I could share it with you next time, I guess. No more really get myself hyped up on the intro. No, no, no. That's that's fine. I'll just draw my performance from somewhere else, TJ. <laughs> oh, is that where you drew your performance yeah. from? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize. Yeah, what, what, what do you think? Okay. Well, I'll, next time I will share it. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I, it was that important. I'm personally drawing my performance from the Land of the Lost poster, Paul. So don't you dare turn off that way. Dude, I love I love my Land of the Lost poster. I looked up what that little dude's name is, and I can't remember it for the life of me now. But he was like the monkey guy that they find. The that's, monkey guy that they find. That was his name. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's what he is, though. The yeah, monkey name, guy. No matter how hard I try, I just cannot remember. Like Stevie's birthday. It's like <laughs> in my mind, it's October 8th or 9th, and I can never remember it. It's I October 8th. It's October 8th. Okay. So you'll tell me this. And my mind is just it, like. You ask me 30 minutes from now, like, what's Stevie's birthday? Is it October 8th or 9th? I'm like, oh, shit. It's got to be the 9th, right? I'm horrible with birthdays. I remember Paul's birthday, April 1st. I April mean, Fools. I, I, I've just got a memorable birthday, though. Yeah. You're an right. April it's, Fool. What's that birthday? April Fool's no. Day. What's you don't know it, do you? What's that, Scotty? It's my birthday, TJ. July you know it, 16th. Oh, you do know it. Fuck. Yep. What's and, Chelsea's birthday? Uh, December 6th. Oh, okay. Damn, dude. I was trying to catch you on that one. Yeah, I remember. Like, oh, 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 well, fuck. I remember all birthdays. You can never bust it on your anniversary, dude. It's Halloween. How can you fucking forget Halloween? That was smart on your part, TJ. Yep, that's why I did it. Well, my anniversary is sometime in fucking May. I have like an, I have like three reminders. My anniversary is sometime in May. I have a remind. I have three re- three reminders. Yeah, I have one a month before. I have one two weeks before, and I have one a week before. It's like anniversary. Anniversary, anniversary, okay, because like, dude, I'm not gonna remember it. I mean, I'm just not going to. <laughs> wow, wow, Scotty, wow. Dude, me and Taylor tried to figure it out one time. She couldn't remember it either. It was like it was in May, I think. <laughs> it's like doesn't fucking matter after it happens, dude. Yeah, I guess you're right, Scotty. I guess you're right. Yeah, I am fucking right, TJ. Good of you to notice. Good of you to notice. I really appreciate that. Why are we even here, TJ? Why you are you here? Oh, like uh, stimulus payments or something. We're here to banter endlessly. This is another banter sode, right? Oh, uh, shit, dude. All so right. start okay, bantering. Cool. Start banting. I'm down. I'm down. I'm always down for a banter sode. Yeah. I could, I could, I could uh, retool the entire show into one long banter sode. Yeah. I think we, uh, <laughs> I don't think, pe- I don't know. Maybe some people would mind. I don't know. I don't think that many people would really mind if it was just like all banter all the time. We just show up and like, man, my socks today have been fucking weird. <laughs> just, I guess today's episode's about socks, you know? Yeah. yeah. One thing I did to simplify my, my life with socks, I buy all the same sock. Well, I, I have one that's long and I have one that's short. That's it. And they're all Adidas ones and they're all black. That's it. I don't have to worry about matching socks. I only have one type of, or actually, excuse me, two types of socks. <laughs> I used to just have plain black or white socks, but I got bored with it, so now I have colorful, crazy socks. And good luck matching those fucking things, dude. Oh, I don't have to. That's Chelsea's job. Damn. Wow, it's really sexist, TJ. It's not sexist. It's just her job. I like didn't realize it was like that. It's just like it's, it's my job to cook, you know? Whatever. We have this. Oh, it's, it's man called- cook, woman sort socks. Uh, yeah, you know? Wow, dude, you're sexist, TJ. I thought you were more progressive than that, bro. You thought wrong. Old, you thought wrong, bitch. It's 2020, <sighs> TJ, not 1920, bitch. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like how TJ has turned his marriage into a corporation <laughs> <laughs> where he and Chelsea represent two opposing labor forces in a giant corporate machine <laughs> yeah. filled with jobs. That's how relationships work, Paul. Did, Is it? Did you get, didn't you get my memo? I've never tried it. <clears throat> I've never tried that relationship. Yeah, well, it works. Yeah, it did. It's Damn. successful. Okay. Paul, you, know, for, you know, for once, you could see the, uh, the side of the brutal oppressor. You could be like, look, you're going to do all this labor for me, and I'm going to do jack shit in return. And yeah, gonna- but then the, bru- then the one that I'm oppressing gets to come back and tell me to do a bunch of shit, too. 
They're like, no. oh, yeah, well, you're doing the toilets. It's like, fuck. <laughs> That's when you get goons, Paul. That's just make sure goons. just make sure you get all the good jobs for yourself. Um, oh, yeah, because there's no fucking there's no leverage on the other side in <laughs> jockeying for those positions. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it sounds like a fucking. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you say you say it works. It sounds like corporate negotiations. We have very little leverage. <laughs> all right. I was like. So today's episode is actually TJ's crazy hypotheticals. So here's what's going on. So we we usually have like, you know, a week advance notice knowing what we're going to shoot or, you know, at least a few days. Yeah. This time and you have TJ today. just sprung this one on us today. <laughs> this is what you get. About 10 minutes. Uh, today, I will present you two with a series of hypothetical questions. These right. questions are designed to test every facet of your character. Cool, you, may, okay. you may ask for clarification on the questions, but you cannot attempt to wheeze a lot of answering. For instance, if you are asked something like, you know, you either have to kill your dog or your significant other, you can't be like, I wouldn't kill either one because that's boring and defeats the purpose. Uh, now, none of my questions. That's not one of the questions, by the way. So because uh, that's. Oh, oh, damn. I was looking forward to answering that. But uh, you guys are both clear on those rules, right? Uh, uh, if there's rules, is there a prize? Because if I'm gonna prize, then I mean, I don't know why. Like, what, what am I? There's no way. Yeah, why play a game if there's no fucking prize? It's not a game. Yeah. There's no win. There's no way to win. You can't get points. If there's rules. There's a game, TJ. So basically, this is just like TJ compelling us both to give very <laughs> private answers. And to agree to be slave to his fucking whim for the next fucking hour and a half, two hours. Right, CJ, In other words, the best kind of episode there is. Me and Paul want rewards, dude. What's our reward? Come up with something. The reward? Okay. Um, the re- You guys eat. You know, I haven't even got my reward from the last goddamn game. Where's my fucking snack pack, bitch? You know what? I, I thought of that criticism. So actually, I just sat down and ordered it just like 20 just minutes 20 ago. Just 20 minutes ago? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> The check is in the mail. <laughs> Fucking son of a bitch. I can, prove, I can prove I ordered it. I can prove I ordered it. Dude. I want that damn snack pack, man. And, and it's going to be coming here in. Yeah, we'll see. yeah, yeah, eight yeah. Days. Have eight, eight days. days. Should have ordered that shit from fucking forever. Ah, oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so I'm lazy. What do you want from me, dude? All what right. All right. You? you don't get no prizes. Fuck you. This is just your prize is at the end of the uh, episode. You've made a, a good episode. That's your prize. I want, a, I want a prize. No, you don't get a prize. What benefit is it to me? Yeah, fuck you. What benefit is it to me, TJ, to allow you to take a blunt scalpel to my psyche? To my psyche? Uh, entertainment value for the people. I know. Okay. I know that All you right. are a river unto the people. I'll, Paul. Do, I'll do without a prize, TJ. As right. as the same question. All right. So the first question is called the Time Wizard. Ooh. And you might. I don't know if this question will actually be difficult for you guys or not. This question might be easy. So we might. The first one might just be a breeze. But that's why I put it first. I think that there's I think it's a more difficult question than it might initially appear once it's posed, but we'll see. All right, so the time wizard. You're minding your own business, surfing through options on Netflix, when suddenly, in a terrific plume of purple smoke, the time wizard appears before you, oh. striking your heart with terror. He is a hideous, gnarled faced old coot with dark malice pervading his expression. So me? You scream in shock. <laughs> He's me? Yes. <laughs> it's basically just you, but thinner, maybe. You scream in shock, and he laughs maniacally. You beg him to go away and leave you alone, and he says he will. But first, you must help him make a choice. The great temporal council has decreed that the current trajectory of stand-up comedy, through some convoluted nonsense that you do not understand, will eventually lead to a time paradox. The council will not allow this to happen, and they have developed two possible solutions to the paradox. Through an act of divination, they have determined that you are the one best suited to make the decision as to which plan they should choose to resolve the impending paradox. They're wise. They must either rewrite history so that Carrot Top is considered the greatest comedic genius of all time. Oh, God. And influences heavily all comedians that follow him. Or they must erase any and all trace of Bill Cosby from history. Which of these two choices do you advise the time council, uh, the time wizard, to return to his council with? This is not a hypothetical. <clears throat> it is a hypothetical. No, this is an either or. Yes. 
This is not a, that's not hypothetical. It's a hypothetical question because we have to, unless we have, an actual time wizard has come to you and given you this choice, it is a hypothetical question. That is true. But it's, it, it is a this or that. It's an either or wrapped in a hypothetical. Okay. okay. Fine. Because I don't because I don't get to get so so the time wizards have given me two choices. Yes. But you Number get to one. You get to weigh them out. The, Carrot Top is the greatest comedian ever. Or what was and what was number two? Bill the, the complete great. erasure of Bill Cosby from uh, all it's, of history. I'm now sorry, this isn't hard, dude. That, I read a Bill Cosby. Well, you know, I I know I know you'd instantly go to Bill Cosby because I mean, like he's a rapist and shit. So no, if you, not even that. If you erase like, him, what about stand up comedy? I don't think Bill Cosby's stand up comedy is all that fucking funny or good. So I don't give so a shit. Even if it, but but even then. There's reason. There are com- some compelling reasons to not erase Bill Cosby from his. Oh, that is gone. That's kind of that's kind of shitty. Bill Bill Cosby was super influential. Right, and a lot look, of I mean, he comedians. was a he was a groundbreaker in a shit ton of different ways. Like, uh, he funded partially the uh, the the fucking first independent black film, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Revenge, which led to a whole slew of other films. Uh, hugely influential on culture. His show in the 80s uh, kind of uh, changed race relations in America and kind of uh, humanized black people to a lot of yeah. probably still recent uh, racist whites. Um, he just also that, that someone else wouldn't have risen just to take his place. It's possible. That's what I'm banking on. Look, this council has come to me. And if I have to fucking have Carrot Top be the main comedic influence, then the world might as well be destroyed anyways. The fucking yeah. might as well fly. Well, here's another thing you got to consider with the Carrot Top scenario, though. Just because everyone was influenced by Carrot Top doesn't mean everyone's a bunch of Carrot Top clones. There could be like a dark, gritty Carrot Top in that world. Well, yeah, but it's not. For me, it's just more the Carrot Top shtick being the main thing that everybody's riffing on. Like, I don't I don't want that. I don't want an edgy <laughs> Carrot Top. I don't want a dude that's juggling fucking chainsaws instead of pulling dildos out of his prop bucket. You Are you know sure? I mean? I'm a hundred percent sure. Yeah, dude. I do not like. I'm kind of with Scotty on this one. Like the thought of, yeah, Bill Cosby was hugely influential on a number of comedians. Um, I mean, guys like Bill Car- uh, Bill Carlin or fucking Bill Carlin. Bill Carlin, Bill Carlin. Carlin. Joe Cosby, George, George Carlin has listed him as a you know <clears throat> a, a, at least Richard a Pryor, yeah, influence Pryor. You know, but I mean, either way, the, you're changing the you're probably changing right. the comedy landscape for the worse. Either what, either one. Sure, it's just a matter of which one's worse. And you know, I mean, you might be actually harming race relations by getting rid of Bill Cosby, even though, of course, now his reputation is is basically mud. You know, right. So yeah, I mean, I I, I think I got to go with eliminate Cosby on this one because just just because the thought of a comedic landscape where like the Godfather influence is carrot top, <laughs> I don't know, man, is way more hideous to me than you know trying to think about the loss of Bill Cosby and then Paul was killed in the race. and then race. plus you prevent a bunch of rapes too. Yeah, that's a, yeah. a good added bonus, dude. With like with with the carrot top one, you probably create a bunch of rapes. <laughs> you, probably, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. you want to go to my box behind the stage? Sure. All right, Paul, you might like this one a little better because it's a little bit more open ended. Okay, and it's not as much of an either or. This is called alienated. You are abducted okay. by aliens who fly you halfway across the cosmos to be an exhibit in an alien zoo. You are put into an enclosure roughly 900 square feet in size. All of your basic needs are met, but it is otherwise a very Spartan environment. Your alien masters, wishing to maximize your happiness in the environment so their guests don't complain, offer to supply you with any reasonable amenities and decor that you might desire. What do you request? Ooh. All right, get, get, summarize the fucking main question for me again. So you've been kidnapped by aliens. You're given right. an enclosure that's about 900 square feet in size. That's about 30 by 30. Right. <laughs> Your alien masters are basically like, okay, look, we want you to be comfortable here, you know, as comfortable as you possibly can be living in captivity. So what do you need for your enclosure to be happy? Okay. okay. So what, I mean, I guess what's the limitation of, like, what's reasonable? So... Like uh, when I posed this question as a test question to Chelsea last night, she was like, well, I want Internet. It's like you you can't have Internet, but the aliens can get you a compendium of every like movie or book or whatever that existed 
up to that point, but you can't have like an active internet connection to Earth because you're halfway across the fucking galaxy. You know? Okay. Yeah, that makes. They sense. don't. They don't have faster than light communications. No. What kind of aliens are these? The the that's the aliens you're dealing with. I mean, can I, can I get a replicator or something? No, they're not going to give you a replicator because you could y- use it to uh, you know, well, make a tool to escape. Then- there are aliens. Can they write permissions in there that basically just like limited to like things I would like want, like a database or something of approved items? No, I want my own Death Star. That's what I need to be comfortable. <laughs> They're not. This gonna, room, you, this can't a, a, would, I, you can't no, fit a Death Star in, in I, your. See, here's the thing. You asked me a hypothetical. Yes. I would go to them and argue for a better thing because this 30 by 30 shit, this is not working for me. They're not going to do it. I would tell them immediately. This is not working for me. I want a Death Star. <laughs> uh can I pick? Uh, here's what I'd ask. I'd ask for them to switch me with somebody else. I'm like, look, there's probably way better specimens, uh, specimens of humanity. Why don't we just swap me out for one of those people? I got a whole list of famous people. They've already people. decided that you're the one they want. They've fucking scoured the oh, earth. Fuck, They've dude, decided I'm that the you one? are the ultimate specimen of humanity. Really? Okay. Well, I guess that's you a can't ask. Thing. You can't ask for a bigger room. You can't ask for a fucking crazy okay. item. You got to fucking fill this little box. That's what they've given you. They're not being flexible or reasonable about, well, I guess it's, it's probably not reasonable to ask for a Death Star, but they're not going to give you anything like that. Me. They're going to give you su- they're going to give you creature comforts and creature right. comforts only. Can I get a sex robot? Because I guess I'm not going to be able to get laid. Yes, you can get a sex okay. robot. Yeah, I want a sex robot for sure. Um, I want a compendium of like knowledge and porn because I mean, I'm going to get bored there. Right. How uh, many gaming systems uh, stat? Uh. What about Taco Bell? Am I allowed to have that? Can I get Taco Bell? Um, they will. They will fucking. Uh, adjust, they'll put Taco Bell esque items on your uh, menu, but right. sounds good. But they're not going to give it to you that much because they're going to feed you uh, a, a a diet that maximizes health. But they'll give you maybe Taco Bell esque items as a treat. Yeah, I want a double decker taco, dude. That's what I want. Fuck. So you know, I, I would I would allow myself to be kidnapped by the aliens just to get a fucking double decker taco. If they got double decker tacos up there, fucking sign me up. There's, uh, there's no more on Earth or some shit too, man. You get fucking really stir crazy. I guess they're just gonna. So you're just kept in this enclosure. You're never allowed out of it for any reason. Uh, there's a treadmill. <laughs> That's it. Okay. You're stuck Fuck, in the box dude. though. So I guess like yeah, that's a pretty like. Are they gonna keep me for my life? I mean, what's how long am I gonna be kept in? I'm like, it was like a, for, the, gonna, for the rest of your life, too. for the rest of your natural life, you will spend in the box. Damn, dude, I might ask, ask for some sharp objects or something at some point. Yeah, they're okay. not gonna let you have anything that you, to kill yourself with. Obviously, fuck, dude, this is fucked up. Yeah, man. You're it's basically happening. you're basically in a prison at this point. You're you're a fucking captive animal. You're there to, for their guests, uh, their alien guests to gawk at. <clears throat> you're gonna spend the rest of your days, uh, you know, being gawked at by fucking alien visitors. Who are like, ooh, look at that strange bipedal ape creature. Do I get to fucking like look at the aliens at least? I get to see who's like Yeah, you will at- there's gonna be okay. one of the walls will be uh sort of like a glass or a force field that you can see the aliens looking at you, but they can also see everything you do. Like if you jerk off to porn, there's aliens going, Look, he's jerking off. I think I get over it pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't like, think it'd be yeah, I don't think it'd be too big of a deal for too long. You'd just be like, Whatever. The they just uh, think you're an animal. I, I I would throw my shit at the aliens too if I could. I might not have a force field to prevent it, so, but you know, that's, I'd still try it. I mean, well, Me- you, all, all you're gonna do is add to their amusement at that point. Yeah, the, whatever. I mean, I'm fucking stuck in this prison anyways. <laughs> might as well amuse myself. Well, I mean, yeah. I've got some ideas. Okay. Uh, what do you got? So, number one, these are aliens. They got massive technology and shit. They would know that keeping an animal. One of the ways you can do that is to make their enclosure like their natural environment. Right. And so I would want the walls wallpapered in some kind of one way screen where to me, you know, I can see, uh, you know, a big, you know, like it's like a in Prometheus. Right. Remember when she had the screen that looked like different environments and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So cool. to me, you know, I can kind of at my whim change it to a desert environment or a forest environment or a beach environment or yeah, you yeah. know, whatever whatever I want. That I don't I see get to that. I get to see that, but you know, I I don't care. It's see through for the rest for the guests, but I don't ever see the zoo guests. That's fine. Yeah, so I think that, they, I think they would, would allow one. they would allow that. Sure, that would that would be number one. I don't care if they can see me, but I never know that they're there. Right. Number two. 
I just need access to that fucking compendium of all human things. All music, all writing, all movies ever made, all trivia that you know was available. Right. Um yeah, I just need <clears throat> access to that cuz that's everything else is off of that, you know. I want video games, I can play any video game I want. Right. And maybe they can update it every like 5 years or so. I want to watch a movie. There's no bullshit. No, like, oh, I got to join this or fucking like this is an upgrade for me. Honestly, this part of it is an upgrade for me. Right. You'll have a complete library of every movie ever made and all that stuff because that's no. But problem I want for I want all human knowledge, though. Yeah, sure. Uh, I also want a library of alien knowledge. Translated. Into human. Translated into English for me. Or at least, you know, whatever they'll give me. I'm sure they're not going right. to give there's, me all. There's going to be some wisdom. stuff that's probably going to be off limits, but they'll give you some fucking hint of yeah. uh, of that. I mean, look, obviously these aliens have mastered interstellar travel, so you're going to want that kind of knowledge. You're going to be like, hey, you know. They're probably going to laugh at you and say that your tiny human brain cannot even comprehend the knowledge that they've accrued, but they'll give it to you. Well, that's fine. They can laugh, <laughs> but, you know. Blame them. I laugh at me, too, but, I mean, still, it's like, you know, the, the, the ape wants the knowledge. Sure. Here, here. Oh. Here I want to see go. their entertainment. I want to see their movies and you know whatever the analog is. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I want access to that shit. Okay, that seems pretty um, reasonable. Like yeah. as far as like living situation goes, I'm assuming they're handling feeding me, so I don't need a kitchen. Yeah, you're not going to need a kitchen. They're going to feed you your three squares or whatever the fuck. Right. So I just need like a big kind of like alien amorphous bed kind of thing that can be reconfigured into a seat. You know, because the walls are all these fucking advanced displays, I could just use a big chunk of that for the screen that I'm watching things on and shit. Yeah. So I just need a big comfy chair, like a big comfy bed chair thing, you know? Seems reasonable. All right, let's move on. This is one I really like. This is uh, the incel and the witch doctor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you're going to have to kind of like adapt to a character in this one a little bit. Okay. You have to put yourself in the boots of an incel. So you are single and uh, you're desperately horny. You're a virgin, even though you're in your mid 30s. And, uh, you know, you want desperately to get laid, but every potential partner that you've ever pursued is completely uninterested in you, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe your standards are too high. Who knows? <clears throat> You're so desperate, you decide to consult a voodoo priest named, uh, named Marlon Mumbo, <laughs> who you've heard is able to solve any problem with his magic, but at a terrible cost. But your balls are so blue that you're willing to pay any price, or so you think. You walk into his parlor, a candlelit room full of cheesy voodoo knickknacks, and you're kind of like, oh, I think I made a mistake in coming here. You sit for some time, growing impatient, when all of a sudden a giant boa constrictor falls from the ceiling. And, you know, you're pretty freaked out at first. And you jump up, you try to run for the exit, but the door is uh, suddenly locked, you know. Um, you, uh... You turn back, you look at the boa constrictor, and you see it slowly sort of transform into mumbo. There's no chance at all that this is a clever special effect. You, you can see every stage of this transformation happening right before your eyes in real time. So you know now with certainty that this guy does possess magical abilities. So after a few moments, he's able to coax you back to the table, and you begin to tell him your problems. He nods sympathetically with your plight, but you can still kind of see this vaguely like serpentine look on his face and in his eyes. Uh, when you're done speaking, he strokes his chin contemplatively for uh, several minutes or moments anyway. He finally tells you in his deep gravelly voice that he has just the thing for you. And he produces a vial of brackish green brown liquid. And he tells you that whoever you splash this on will fall instantly and desperately in love with you. But not just love, they will become infatuated with you to the exclusion of all else. They'll want to be with you every minute of every single day. 
They will become insanely jealous every time you so much as glance at another fucking person. They're going to be singularly obsessed till the day that they die. And if this becomes too much for you and you attempt to break it off, they will become a relentless stalker that you just cannot get rid of. Okay. If you ever snap and like kill them or something like that or lock them up or whatever, you take some extra fucking crazy measure to stop this fucking infatuation, your penis will fall off your body and you'll be stricken with lust 10,000 times more potent, potent than you've ever felt before, which already, you know, you're, you're already fucking crazy blue balled. And uh, you'll never be able to release it or relieve it to even the smallest degree. So basically, it's going to be an eternity of, of, well, at least a torture for the rest of your lifetime. Uh, so he is willing to give you this potion for free. Do you accept the potion? Okay, so I need a quick like like I said, you can ask any clarifying question. Yeah, I need a quick overall sum because that was a pretty long explanation of this yeah. potion's effects. So, so the potion he's telling us up front, this is what the potion will do. Yes. Okay. You want to get laid? Super right, bad. That. You got th- this potion. If you spl- whoever you splash this potion on, like if you fucking go out there, you see a girl with huge titties, nice ass, whatever. You're like, oh my god, that's the one. You splash her. She's going to fall in love with you, and you're going to get all that sex that you desire. But she's going to become obsessed with you. She's going to be smothering you just like constantly. You're never going to be able to get rid of her in, under any circumstance. She's just going to become like your shadow. And, you know, if you even so much as look at another person, she's going to be, you know, I mean, you can use it on a guy, too. I don't know. Whatever you want. But. That's how it's going to be. Is that worth it to you to finally get your dick wet after 30 years of virginity and misery and loneliness? Hmm. Now, keep in mind, as an incel, you don't even have the opportunity to really vet people. Because it's not like you're going to be able to go on a few dates and make sure like, well, I hope this person's personality jives with mine or anything. So you're pretty much going to have to go into this blind. You got to make a decision. You just got to say like, that one looks good. I mean, I don't know. I feel like that there's some options here. So, yes, I would I would take this potion. Sure. And, like, you don't have and to use it right away. You can hold on to it for a while. Sure. Yeah, you don't have to use it right away, like you said. But I would immediately, and I, I would hold on to the potion, and I would start trying to find out the comings and goings and whereabouts of one person. Oh, shit, dude. (laughs) I am going to find where Jude Law is one day. I'm going to fucking catch him in a Whole Foods or something. And I'm going (laughs) to sprinkle this shit on him. Hey, Jude. (laughs) And that's it. So, yeah. Um, So, Paul. Especially if I was, you know, 30 year dry spell, totally desperate. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, so Paul, I mean, Paul has made his choice. He's going with Jude Law 100%. He doesn't care. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Jude can be obsessed with me. Jude can be my shadow. That's fine. Yep. How about I'm you, Scotty? The way. Um, I think in the short term, that'd probably be appealing. You know, you find someone that could be famous, rich, whoever you want. I mean, you'd essentially have, you could have access to whatever you wanted. If you had someone that was madly in love with you, you could have whatever you really desired, especially if they're powerful or whatever. Because you said there's no limit to that. Yeah, you know, they're just going to be madly in love with you. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I think the incel in me would probably just go, you know what? I'll never be good enough. And it sounds like they'll become obsessed. And that sounds like that'd be too much for me to fucking handle. And I'd be uncomfortable. So I'm going to reject the potion. And just go out about being miserable. Just keep, just maintain the blue balls forever. huh? Yeah. I think because I think I think an element of me will just love the misery. If I'm like this incel character, like, you know, it sounds tempting, but then it's like, well, it's not perfect. They should just fall in love with me. Then I want another one. I should get another one. That's no true. Thing. An incel is never really going to be satisfied. Yeah. So I'm going to be like, nah, it's not good enough. The deal has just has to be perfect. And it's not a perfect deal. So I reject the deal. Here's another one. This one is called. Are you king enough? So this is a shorter one. Burger King is struggling to stay afloat. It's probably a year or two away from bankruptcy or insolvency. 
through a wacky series of contrivances, you are now the CEO of the company. Ooh. Task, Hell yeah. Tasked with reinvigorating the brand. Internal, da- internal data reveals that the best chance the company has at this point is basically a Hail Mary introducing a new menu item that captures the national imagination in a big way and drives up flagging sales. What menu item would you introduce in an attempt to save the company? Dude. Now, keep in mind, this is Burger King, and they've literally desperately tried (laughs) basically everything at this point to try to get their sales up. They've introduced a bunch of these novelty items, but you have to come up with one that will actually be the sales boon that they need to stay afloat as a company. Okay. Hmm. All right. What we know about Americans is this. They love cheese. They love meat. And they love fucking bacon, dude. We should fucking make a burger that has no bun, but the bun is made of bacon. And it's just cheese and meat. Sounds pretty greasy. The fucking, the, the first true bacon burger, dude, like, some burgers want you to be stuck with a bun, not ours. <laughs> Introducing a bun made from bacon, the ultimate bacon burger. And I'm just going to what I know based on, on on fat ass Americans, dude. They don't like like the bread, whatever. If they can have a bun made out of bacon, who the fuck's not going to want to buy that shit? Dude, so many fucking gimmicky ass people are going to want that fucking burger. I feel like it'd be hard to hold, though, because it'd be kind of greasy on your fingers and shit. That just shows someone like lick, just show some hot chick licking her finger. Oh, he's mm. so good. Oh. Now, my strategy would just be pure sex appeal. I'd be like that. that that's how I would. So you go, you'd like, sell it with the Carl's Jr. fucking angle, then. Fuck yeah, dude! Just get like Cardi B or some something like twerking like with the burger, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> burger bitch, burger bitch, burger bitch. <laughs> I think that that's might how, work. Maybe that's how I'm gonna save the company, dude. How about you, Paul? How are you gonna this save Burger King? King? Two steps. Two steps. All right. Number one, bring back the BK kids. Okay. Oh, cool. These are your mascots again, so get used to it. Number are you gonna, two. Are you gonna, wait, let me ask you a question really quick. Are you going to sure. update them at all? It's just going to be exactly like this. No, they're exactly like this, especially <laughs> Kid Vid. <laughs> yeah, okay. Kid Vid, he the seems... crazy video game cool dude. Yeah. And the crippled kid, Wheels, or whatever his name was. <laughs> his name literally is Wheels, yes. Um. Yeah. It's exactly this. Okay. Number two, Burger King is the Whopper. Right. Relaunch the Whopper. Relaunch it. How do you? <laughs> yep. With an honest campaign of like, look, we know the Whoppers sucked for a while. But now we've got it fixed. The so, Whopper is back. <laughs> so your idea is you're just, you're just going to bring back. You're basically just going to tell people the Whopper is fixed. How Are you actually going to fix the Whopper? Yes. So yeah. how are you going to do that? Flame broil it again. They used to actually flame broil the Whoppers. So Paul's doing like the Trump approach, like just make Burger King great again. <laughs> yep. I mean, it could work. It could definitely work. I mean, that, that's a proven strategy. That makes sense to me. I'll allow that. I was thinking you'd have to come. I was I was going to go. I was going to make you try to come up with some crazy novelty item, but I think you might be right. <laughs> I maybe think they do. Ha- maybe they do need to reboot the Whopper. <laughs> Yep. I don't know about this Burger King Kids Club, but uh No, no, no. The Kids Club is is key. It's key. Okay. I did the sales. <laughs> it's... Hey dude, if you get kids as consumers, because kids will talk about products like like obviously as adults are like, okay, yeah, they're just crassly trying to market to me, but kids are like, I saw a commercial for this and it's wonderful. So I mean that is I mean, I, I think Paul's a good strategy. I mean, like my strategy is the you know, the gimmicky, you know, let's just fucking get a bunch of celebrities. And let's just get some over the top item, and that could work. And then Paul's just going with you know more classic. Hey, you already know we're f- what we're about, but we're better at it now. Like we fucked up, now we're good again. Yeah, that's I true. Go take a leak. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Well, while Paul's doing that, I'll tell Scotty about my idea. It's called the pizza, bacon, donut, chicken burger. <laughs> Okay, dude. That makes it so expensive to make. <laughs> so it's what it is, is it's two donuts that are topped like pizzas that serve as the buns. And then inside there's a burger and there's bacon and there's chicken. And it's all stacked up in there. Uh, see, here's a problem. I'll tell you number one problem. Fast food's got to be simple. 
It's got to be fucking now. See what you're talking about is like something you find like a hipster restaurant, a fucking like downtown area of a city. Now uh, it sounds good, but like the double down or something like that. It's yeah. like you need something that's like really simple to make and it's really cheap to make. And you all right, well maybe we can maybe maybe we can downgrade it. Maybe it doesn't have to have all that. Maybe it's just it, it's just a fucking burger, but instead of a buns, it's just two little pizzas, two little personal pizzas. Yeah. You could do that, but you, dude, here's the thing about like pizza you look burger at most marketing. For fast food products, the gimmicky ones especially, the reason they use cheese is because there's such a glut of that shit. Like Taco Bell does a lot of items like that. Burger King, you'll notice like all these gimmicky items or shit like that. But they like to keep it simple. That's one thing I've learned about fast food. It's got to be simple, like chicken fries. Burger King saw a huge surge in sales and they like brought back chicken fries. Cheese, cheese, cheese. We love cheese. Yeah, cheese, 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 cheese. Chicken fries it's too, a disease. Man. What's that? Half cheese, half chicken. Burger King's new cheesy chicken fries. It's like basically like mozz- it's like fucking fried mozzarella, <laughs> yeah, and fucking fried chicken in one, dude. How like it? Yeah. All right. So Paul's back. Uh, now it's time for one I- that's just called the briefcase. Okay. Oh shit! This is like Pulp Fiction, dude. No, I st- I, I kind of stole this one, but uh, I-, I changed it up a little bit. I just kind of found uh, this on a-, a website, but I-, I I added like some different twists to it. So you're walking through the city late at night. When your eyes happen to look down a dark alleyway. In the alley, there's a single source of light, a highly focused beam, like a spotlight coming down. And in that spotlight, there's a briefcase. And it's open. And you can see that it's full to the brim with what appears to be $100 bills. Everything around the briefcase is shrouded in darkness. And you feel like Wow, there's no way this isn't a trap. But you're looking at it, that looks like a fucking million bucks right there. Your greed compels you to get a little bit closer and, you know, everything you can see from as close as you're willing to get and still feel like you're remotely safe looks like it's really a million dollars just sitting there in the alley. So you shout out, hello? Hey, is anyone there? There's no answer. And you can kind of feel from the way that the sound has bounced around this alley that the alley kind of feels empty. But you don't know for sure. Now, you do have on your possession a loaded Glock 9 millimeter, And you know how to use it. So if you, if like some dudes jump out at you, you do have some ability to defend yourself. However, your cell phone is dead. So you don't have a flashlight. You don't have an ability to call someone else and be like, hey, come here at the corner of this and that. I got this thing. Do you attempt to snatch the money? Well, why would someone set you up with the money to begin with? That's kind of the question you have to ask yourself. Like if someone wanted like, what? Are the, what's the end goal of it? Just like. Just some weird game like let's put a million bucks out and then fucking kill whoever tries to take it. You don't know what circumstance that money has arrived there. You feel like it's got to be some kind of weird trick or a trap. The briefcase. How's the briefcase on the ground? Is it just th- it's been thrown on the ground? Is it standing neatly there? Like, it is. What- it's neatly placed right in the center of the spotlight. Open displaying its money for all who pass by to see. There's just no fucking way you take that briefcase, dude. Like, does it make any sense? It's it goes against every fundamental principle of our society, which is just like here, just have a million bucks. Like, there's no way I'd grab it, dude. If it's like there's a spotlight on it, there's got to be something insidious behind it. Maybe there's not. Maybe it's like if you have the balls, you grab the the, the briefcase. But I mean, to me, just knowing what I know about America and the world, then there's just a spotlight on it. It just seems like there's too much risk. To go ahead and grab that briefcase and not expect some crazy shit to happen. Yeah, I'm I'm just not money driven enough. <laughs> like that, if it stinks like a trap, I know that there's no way that I'm gonna successfully defeat that trap. <laughs> I'm just not that kind of guy. See, when I asked this question to Chelsea last night, she went through this detailed process of like how she's gonna approach this fucking money. <laughs> it's just like, so okay, I know it's a trap, but. And that's kind of where I'm at. I think I'd go for that money somehow. I'd be like, I'm going to fucking go for this. Fuck this. I mean, if I was fucking Rambo or something, <laughs> I'll go for the money. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll 
<laughs> like uh, my fucking schlubby ass going to be like, I grab it like, you know, and I'm just dead. I mean, come on. I'm just, I, I guess I'm just stupider or greedier or both because I'm going for that fucking dough, man. <laughs> I figured you pussies wouldn't have the balls, though. Yeah. Damn. Uh, all right. So here's the next one. This one's called to pay the bills. You encounter a mad professor who has created a piece of technology that is able to instantaneously transfer complete mastery of any one skill to anyone. Think like the Matrix, where Neo is able to learn Kung Fu. Um, you can make an incre- you could be like an incredible painter, even if previously you could only draw stick figures. You could become a brilliant singer, even if previously you couldn't hit a single note and your voice sounds like shit. You could become an expert martial artist, even if like previously you couldn't kick your foot above your head. So there's no physical or intellectual barrier that cannot be subverted with this technology other than like the laws of physics. Like you can't have the ability to like fly or shoot lasers from your eyes or some superhuman ability. It has to be within the realm of like human possibility. But within that boundary, any skill that you want, you can obtain. Uh, So uh, listen. One out of every 10 people who undergo this procedure die. But the other nine out of 10 get these skills and are amazing at them. So there's I guess there's a double part here. One, would you take the risk? And by the way, the death is relatively painless. You just you you go under for the procedure. You just don't wake up again. It's not like you suffer some horrible, agonizing death or something. Um. So would you risk it? And if so, what skill would you want? Hmm. A tough one. And like I said, feel free to ask any clarifying questions if you need them. I mean, I would definitely risk it. I mean, yeah, it's almost, yeah, to me, it's definitely worth the risk. It's only 10% chance you die. Yeah, you got a 90% chance of survival. Yeah. Um, now is it, is it, how limited is the scope? Let's say like, you're talking about like, like, like say music. I mean, is it just like you're awesome at guitar or is it that you're awesome at music in general? Like how, how much is it? All right. Down? So I'll, when, if it comes to like a musical question, I'll, I will let you do like general musical talent, but you will have to still learn the instruments. It'll be much easier for you to pick them up. But if you want to just have musical talent in one instrument, you can just have that. Gotcha. So you can so basically you can add ask for general musical uh, ability, and that'll give you the ability to pick up an instrument and learn it. But you're still gonna have to work at it a little bit. But you'll be a fucking brilliant at it once you do. Or you could just ask for like I want mastery in guitar, and then you'll just be fucking Jimi Hendrix. Got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, I I think I'd I, I would do it, and I would want to understand how a human. Um, like basically like how like financial like markets work just completely just understand everything so you, about would, you would ask to be you basically be like i want to be the world's greatest economist well yeah so well yeah because i, I could i could basically manipulate all those markets make as much money as i wanted to and then just do whatever i wanted to and fund whatever initiatives i want then obviously get control of governments because i'd be so rich and powerful at that point that and I, I, my understanding of the economy and business and the stock market that I, every move i would make would be brilliant I'd outthink everybody, and I could have like if I want some whatever pet project I want, I could be like some Elon Musk type, or but him on steroids, right? Like you know what? I want to build this thing, or I want to fucking have this initiative pushed. So I push the government to do that, you know, and basically just use my influence however I see fit. Cool, Paul. What hmm. skill would you want? I'd want to be a fuck machine. So you, <laughs> I mean that's that's legit. That's legit. No, don't laugh. That's legit. No, I'm, la- I'm, I'm He I'm wants to be so I, basically I like you want to be the fucking you want to you want to fuck the greatest like a lover that ever lived. The world's cool. greatest lover. All right. And why would you want that ability? Just, you know, I mean I I think uh, we all I think we uh, all understand, but I mean I still want you to explain. <laughs> just so I can fuck my way to the top. <laughs> I mean that seems to be how it works. All right. In the world. So let's see if you guys I, both live. So, Scotty, pick a number. Seven. Seven is your unlucky number. You live. Yes. Paul, you pick a number. Three. You live, too. And uh, you guys get your wishes. Sweet. Damn. All right. Here's kind of a weird one. Uh, This one's called Deep Shit. 
You are an immortal being who cannot be killed, but you're buried in an avalanche and stuck in a prison of total immobility. No one is coming for you. You realize you can probably dig yourself out by the slow and agonizing process of painstakingly eating your way through the dirt in front of you and expelling it through your ass, thus displacing matter from the front of your body to the back of your body. And over time, this will slowly kind of propel you forth towards the surface, which you're, you, you know which way the surface is because you can kind of just tell which way the forces of gravity are acting on you and stuff. Okay. And uh, you know that you're faced in the right direction, that if you do that, you will eventually reach the surface and be free. But it might take centuries or even maybe millennia to fucking do that. So, and of course, every day is going to be a horrible, agonizing ordeal of eating dirt, digesting it, shitting it out. You're going to go fucking mad. So, alternatively... You could accept your fate, retreat inward, and hope for nice dreams through eternity or at least a span of time that's going to feel like an eternity until some happenstance frees you from your circumstance. What do you choose? And by the way, if you want to choose like um, kind of like I'll meditate for a while, then I'll eat dirt for a while kind of thing, you could do that too. All right, so... Is this like an like a mudslide sort of avalanche, or is it like we're talking about like um, like snow and ice and stuff? This is just dirt. It's just so a it's- big fucking mountain of dirt and small rocks and stuff like that. There's not like going to be a big boulder that's going to obstruct your path or anything, but you're buried under fucking a metric fuck ton of just dirt and sediment. Shit. That too, probably. <sighs> I mean, I guess if you were immortal, you might as well just, I mean, yeah, you probably just oscillate between like just like chilling and then just trying to eat your way out. I mean, what the fuck else are you going to do? You could just, I mean, like you could just be like, look, I'm not going to go through this ordeal of trying to escape this. This is my fate. I'm just going to retreat inwards, meditate, live in my own little dream world and just find inner peace, you know? I think if you give someone a chance of any kind, even if it's a terrible chance, that's going to keep them going and drive. I mean, some people obviously are just going to give up and go, fuck it. I'm, I'm here. Eventually, maybe I'll be unearthed or something. But fuck it. Until that until that eventuality that might happen happens, I'm just going to fucking be dead. But uh, or essentially dead. Uh, I'd probably just try to get the fuck out of there. I mean, it's not really a great option, but what else are you going to do? It's not like you got anywhere to go. Scotty <laughs> like, chooses to, to eat the dirt. Eat the fucking dirt, I guess. I think I'd try and create a balance. I would try and give myself a reward with the meditation. So I'd try and, like, uh, you know, (laughs) meditate and create a dream world for myself, a fantasy world that was like a reward. So it was awesome there. And then when I woke up, you know, okay, time to eat dirt for a while <laughs> until I'm too tired to do that. That does seem like the most reasonable solution to the problem, I feel like. Um, all right, so here's one that's a little bit more open-ended. It's still kind of a binary choice, but you could do a little bit more with it if you wanted. So this is called Reliving the Past. Would you rather have nine extra lives like a video game character so that when you die, you simply respawn at home, safe and sound? Or would you rather relive your life from the age of 18 with the benefit of what you know now? This is tough. This one is tough for me. Because both are are equally interesting options to me. Right. Because, I mean, like, if you you have the ability to respawn, you have nine lives. Nine extra lives. So basically ten lives. You have your life now, and then you get nine extras. You could go do a bunch of... You you go rob a bank and be like, you know, so what? If I get shot, I get shot, you know? If I have these extra lives, will people be aware that I have them? Like, no. kind of like, okay, so if, if if something happens to me, it's just like, oh, he's alive. He's fine. You'll respawn. Now, you- you'll respawn safe and sound in your house. Okay. You know, and, uh, you know, the, apparently there'll, there'll probably be another version of you that's like dead in a morgue somewhere, but your consciousness instantly transfers to this new body that's at your house. Okay. I'm, I'm saying like are the people around me aware that I'm dead. So if I like, if I say I go fucking if they see you die, I guess. So they'd be freaked out if they just saw me alive again. Yeah. Oh, I mean, unless you, ex- I mean, unless you explain to them like I have these extra lives and 
you know, if I ever die. Plus, you would be like a recognized criminal in certain uh, right. you know, situations. Depending so on like if, depending on how you fucking handled it, too. So yeah, right. Oh, you know, you, you know, you could do. You could fucking fake your own death with that shit. You could. Um, you could do a fucking total thing, like be like, you could probably you could probably get away with whatever the fuck you wanted in a sense. Because I mean, like you dead. could you could you're mount you're, up, you could like take out a bunch of fucking loans and credit card shit, and then just die in a big public way. And then when you respawn back, you just fucking like dye your hair a different color, and it's like I'm Jeremy Jenkins now, and <laughs> fucking go yeah, somewhere else. Man, you're, that, that, well, you're gonna be fucking dead. Everyone's gonna see your dead body and be like, "He's dead." So, I mean, you can do whatever the fuck you want, at least in that respect. Um, but obviously, the 18 option is interesting too. Because yeah, mean, I mean, like you would, make, uh, uh, you know, it, for you guys, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure that you know there's certain things you could definitely take advantage of that happened since you yeah. were 18. You know, you you know, certain stocks are gonna do well. I mean, like I know f- now that like. I should have bought a bunch of Bitcoin when it was super cheap and then sold it off when it hit that crazy 20,000 level, you know? Yeah, that's true. Could have gotten super rich on that. I mean, you know, Amazon pretty much went from a nothing stock to some kind of huge thing in that time in my lifetime. You make uh, better life choices in a sense, too. If you know, hey, that was a bad decision I made there. I'll yeah, it's it like, right. oh, shit, don't get with that person. They're a fucking nut job. Uh, at the same time, maybe that doesn't maybe that leads to a path of destruction for you. Maybe it doesn't actually help you. Maybe it hinders you because you made better decisions than you think. Yeah, maybe. So, you, so really you do know. you do risk maybe uh, making your life worse. But, you know. <clears throat> yeah, hmm. begin with. Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, I think the nine lives th- thing just simply because like who can ever have, I mean, like, look, the other thing is, is a tempting option, but I feel like if you had that, that's like something like so unique that you I mean, who's the fuck's going to get nine lives. I mean, you're essentially going to have that to do whatever the fuck you want with. Yeah. I think the nine lives ekes it out. I think going back would actually be kind of torturous. Yeah. In some ways. Yeah. So, yeah. I probably wouldn't do anything totally crazy with the nine lives, but I think just having those in your hip pocket is probably pretty good. Yeah. I do kind of wonder, though, what would happen if you reach, like, the end of your life, you know, like, oh, shit, I've got cancer, and then you finally die of cancer, and then you respawn, you know, like, oh, shit, I still have cancer. Oh, yeah, that to die. suck. Got to die slowly of this horrible, debilitating illness, like, nine more times, you know. Well, you said that your conscious would be transferred <laughs> to another body, so... Would that body even have cancer? Uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that the body that you come back to is in the same general condition as yours before you died. Oh, well, that sucks then. Yeah, I don't these know. are both dog shit fucking scenarios. Maybe if you're maybe if you, maybe your cancer would be gone. I don't know. Maybe that counts as like an injury because I'm going to assume you're in perfect condition when you come back, but you're still going to be as old as you were. So like if you're 80 and you die of cancer, maybe you come back and you don't have cancer, but you're still going to be 80. Yeah, I mean, but you could end your life very quickly at that point. If you were down to like seven lives, I mean, you could just be like, okay, I'll just kill myself seven more times real quick. <laughs> Boom. Uh, All, right. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, but- All right. Boom. All right. Boom. All right. Boom. You know, but I mean, hey, I, I, I yeah, because I mean, going back through from 18 to now, it's like 14 years for me. You know, Paul, your case, it's like 22 years. That's fucking that's a long fucking time. to have. I mean, to you'd have it. a sneak preview of every like not just your own life. You'd have a sneak preview of everything that's going to happen to the point where you can manipulate some shit. That'd be cool in some respects, but I don't think I want to live through it again. I really could have. You could do that fucking, uh, you know, Marty with the sports almanac kind of shit. I'm taking my nine lives, dude. Taking the nine lives, huh? Scotty chooses the nine lives too. Scotty and Paul both choose the kitty cat option. Yeah, cool. I'll be like a cat. All right, this one is called the beauty bean. You and your significant other are walking through the forest when a mischievous elf appears on a nearby rock and identifies himself as Lord Jimbly. <laughs> what the fuck? He does an annoying dance and sings an annoying song and produces from his satchel of wonders a magic bean. This bean, he tells you, will make whoever eats it ridiculously attractive, almost supernaturally beautiful. But he only has one, and it won't work if it's split. And it has to be taken quickly, so don't think about taking it and trying to sell it or something. He leaves it sitting on the rock and vanishes. You have no reason to doubt his story, as elves are common in this reality, and they're known for their honesty as well as occasionally imparting magical gifts on humans. 
If you take the bean, you will become an ideal version of yourself. Whatever physical defects you think you have will be gone forever and replaced with perfect features. If your significant other takes it, they will become angelically gorgeous by whatever standard you have. Do you eat it? Do you give it to your significant other? Or do you leave it lying there on the rock? Hmm. Hmm. That's fucking tough, dude. Because part of you wants to take it, so you're like, yeah, I'm perfect. But then it kind of feels like you're being a dick to your significant other. You're like, yeah, you don't get it. Not only that, though, but think about this. You give it to your significant other, all of a sudden, they're like way the fuck out of your league. Like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the same thing for you. Then you're then suddenly maybe you're way out of their league. Right. So this like, this could create a fucking weird. This could create a rift in whatever relationship you got going, you know? <sighs> I mean, I personally don't need it because I'm just amazingly. I mean, obviously, you, Scotty, are already yeah, fucking, you know, you know. No, I'm already up there. Uh, fuck, dude. Man, you know what? It seems like if you can't both do it, it's not really worth it. I leave the van the fucking rock, man. I'm eating it. <laughs> Paul's just like, I got it. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> oh, get back, get back. <laughs> I just ate it, and this is me now. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Paul's like, Paul's like, I'm eating it. It's mine. Get away from my bean, bitch. Fuck this. Give me now. I'm beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd eat it for sure. Did you know what, Paul, though? Let's be honest, man. Even if you even if you did become Jude Law, you became Paul's the Paul version of Jude Law. Wouldn't change you on the inside. <laughs> I, I don't that I don't want to be changed on the inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. All this icky, droopy oh. stuff on the outside that I want to get rid of. <laughs> All right. Paul, this one uh yeah, Paul. This one's fun. Um, you guys will like this, I think. That's This one's called That's Super, Man. Okay. You have contracted a rare disease that slowly dissolves your in- internal organs over the course of several agonizing years of unremittent and exponentially increasing pain. There is no known cure or even treatment, and so you decide to end your life. However, yeah, what's that, Paul? I thought that was me. I said, damn, that sucks. Oh. However, every time you attempt to kill yourself, Superman shows up to save you. You jump off a bridge, he catches you. You try to shoot yourself in the head, he freezes the gun with his ice breath before it can fire, and so on and so on. Every method, every time, Superman is there. Whatever you try, Superman's there to give you a fucking annoying lecture about the value of life. Is Is Superman a fundamentalist Christian now? Yes. Uh, he's yeah. totally unreasonable when you try to explain to him the horrible, slow, agonizing death that you're slated to suffer. And you tell him, like, look, I'd rather have this quick, painful, like quick, painless death than have this slow, horrible, painful death over many years. Now, Superman, does, he's, he's not he's not amenable to this at all. He's totally like, no, you got to live it's the value of life, the beauty of life. He doesn't seem malicious, but he seems like completely, totally misguided. So you take your case to the media, hoping that you might find some allies there, but you find that no one's really sympathetic with you. Uh, Even the people who do find kind of like sympathize with your plight are like, you know, look, Superman does so much for the world. He does so many good things for us that, you know, if this if Superman has this one little flaw that he won't let this suicidal guy die whatever we just have to accept that about superman so even the people who are kind of sympathetic still are not really on your side eventually though you do find a lawyer to represent you in court and he has a legal case that's pretty airtight to stop superman from saving you but in the process it would basically prevent superman from saving anyone at any time now superman being a symbol of law and order and a patriot says that he will abide by the court's decision So national media attention that was already unsympathetic towards you is now against you completely. People are furious at you. People are uh, spitting out on you on the street. You know, you're shamed in the national press. Protesters gather outside your house. Uh, You know, people are on TV talking about what a piece of shit you are. 
all the time. There's widespread anger towards you. There's an, a growing, roaring demand for you to drop your case against Superman. Because how dare you selfishly deprive the world of Superman? So some wealthy philanthropists even promise you, look, we're going to pour millions of dollars into research, into the treatment of your fucking disease. We're going to try to make your life as comfortable as possible. Maybe we'll even find a cure. It's unlikely, but maybe we can at least find you some good treatments that will give you a greater degree of comfort as you kind of wind slowly down this drain. Ultimately, you do recognize that Superman does more harm than good, that more uh, good than harm in the world. But you wake up every day in worse and worse pain, and you don't think you can fucking handle it. So, do you cave into public pressure? Do you proceed with your case? What do you do? Do you deprive the world of Superman for your own uh, comfort? <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Look. I have a debilitating disease. Superman won't let me die. A bunch of assholes then attack me because I have a fucking basically a benevolent dictator <laughs> that just won't let me fucking die. And no one else gives a shit. They're harassing me, treating me like shit. Fuck them. I'm, 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 I'm fucking suffering and want to die. And I'm going to be dead afterwards anyways. So fuck them. What does it matter to me? I'm dead. And then they get fucked. So fuck them and fuck Superman for fucking forcing me to keep staying alive. <laughs> Uh, I wish I had a different perspective on this, but I kind of don't like, I, I feel like in killing Superman too, I'd be liberating a bunch of people like me he, who he's probably out there saving too. <laughs> yeah. So there's probably others like you. Maybe there's even a support group somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, it's time to wean ourselves off the Superman teat y'all, but you know, he's yeah, out there. I like, definitely proceed with my case in this it. world though. This stuff like, you know, these, these fires in Australia, Superman already put those out a long time ago, you know, well, look, geez, we, we, we Every disaster we averted. You know, the last time a hurricane rolled through, no one was killed because Superman saved them all. You know like he saved Here, a lot of people. He helps a lot of people out. Here's what's gonna happen, TJ. I'm gonna win my case, and then there's gonna be another case presented shortly thereafter that reverses the decision of my case. But I'm already dead anyways, and Superman can go back to his miserable. <laughs> we all know what's gonna happen. Come on, justifying his fucking selfishness. What a piece of garbage. <laughs> Dude, let's be honest. We know that fucking Superman is going to fucking be brought back immediately. There's going to be some calamity. They're going to be like, Supreme Court rules nine, you know, nothing that Superman is legal to do whatever he needs to do. I mean, whatever. They're going to pass a law. They're going to change. No. All right. So Superman, Superman's got to die. He's got to die. And I would, uh, as a stipulation, when I win my case, I would want to be the one that fires the kryptonite bullet. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no mechanism to kill him in this scenario. Yeah. Come on. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. All right. So he I do be tied down with kryptonite ropes and I will shoot him in the head with a kryptonite bullet. So I do have written uh, up here as a finale, the the greatest hypothetical ever written. But we're going to do some quickies first. All right. Some now quickies. you get, Yeah. These are ones that I, I you know, those ones I kind of wrote out this big, long shit for. These are ones that are just more direct kind of questions. Gotcha. All right. So number one. Of the quickies. Would you rather be the greatest artist of your lifetime, but your work is never appreciated while you're still alive, but it'll be celebrated for generations to come afterwards? Or would you rather be a super popular artist in your lifetime whose work will not stand the test of time and will be looked at as utter garbage by future generations? <laughs> Simple one. Uh, I'd be I'd be the popular artist now. I mean, who cares? What do I care if I'm fucking worm food? <laughs> And people are worshiping me. That does me no good. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people really seem to put a value on that legacy, though. Yeah. Not you guys. No, you want, guys are way I want more the pragmatic. fucking Malibu mansion <laughs> now. I want the fucking Bentley. I want the Rolexes. I want the Lear jet to fly me anywhere in the fucking world that I want. I want the champagne. I want the bitches. Eh, well, fair enough, man. What about you, Scotty? I'm going with the legacy, dude. You want your name to echo throughout history. You want people to be like, this is reminiscent of the work of the great Scott Kirk. And you don't have a massive ego. Come on. That's a, that's Amelia appealing to me. Yeah, the other shit's, I mean, that's definitely, like, to, to me, it's like, do you want it now or do you want it later? Because I, I know what you're saying. Like, ah, oh, you, you know, don't get it later. That's the thing. You're dead. You, Paul, because you're going to be an influential figure throughout history. 
Yeah, but you're not going to be here to see any of it or experience I'll, any of it. I'll left a, well, sir, that's true, but I've left a greater mark than you would have. So <laughs> I'm fine with it. I mean, yeah, the mark. But <laughs> like, what does the mark matter when you're in oblivion? Because I'm going to uh, influence countless generations. So you, you lived in a dirty hovel. Fever, feverishly slaving away on your paintings your whole life, and I lived a fucking dick sucking romp of a fucking bacchanal of a life. Okay, well that's your decision. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> All right, if you could eat for free at McDonald's any time you wanted, how often would you eat there? All the fucking time, dude. Uh, do I have uh, to give you a number? Like if I had one in my house or something? No, you still got to go to it, but it's free. I can't be like Richie Rich and just have it in my house. Or like if you eat there just as much as I do now, honestly. (laughs) No more, no less, huh? Yeah. How often is that? (laughs) I probably go there like twice a week. Uh, Yeah, once or twice a week, I'd probably eat it. Yeah, I mean, all right. Every day. I mean, we saw fucking. You don't want to overdo it. I mean, we saw Morgan Sprock's thirty days thing, where you know he fucking almost died. But it's kind of tempting. It's kind of tempting when it's just like you can just go in there and be like, "Yeah, give me fucking ten cheeseburgers or whatever." And they're just like, "Here you go." Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd probably be tempted sometimes, but I'm not really like, I don't know. I think I'd probably go once a week. All right. You, you, you can't overdo it. If you could gain the powers and abilities of Spider-Man, but you would lose the ability to lie, would you do it? Oh, damn. I mean, you're Spider-Man, so yeah, fuck it. I don't know. Lying is so important to like actually having relationships and shit, though. Right. I mean, every, I mean, like literally every human relationship, there's got to be some element of deception involved. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't be totally honest all the time. Yeah, that's no, true. It's true. Uh, you know what, though? You get to be Spider Man, so that's pretty fucking cool. Spider Man, think- Spider Man. I mean, I'm not too big into lying anyways. I definitely lie, but I mean, if I get to be Spider Man, I had to be honest. I mean, it would be annoying, but it's like someone gets pissed at you, just shoot him with a web. <laughs> yeah, you would be Spider Man, but you would alienate everybody around you. I mean, that's kind of be the kind of the role of Spider Man, anyways. You're going to be alienated. All uh, right. Would you rather be super ugly, but be the best lover to ever exist in the history of the human race, or super okay. hot, but don't know what the fuck you're doing in the bedroom? So I'm already option two. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm already option two. You got to pick super hot because there's way more benefits of being attractive uh, outside of the bedroom. I mean, like, yeah, you, plus, plus you still get laid. People just be like, yeah, he was a crummy lover. You, but you get all the other benefits of like, you could be a model. You could get into whatever party you want to. People respect you just because you're attractive. So you have a lot more going on there. Yeah, like master sex skills are only really useful if you could ever convince anybody to fuck you. But you know what? If you if you did start to get it going, you could start to get a reputation of like, wow, you know. Yeah, but I mean, how how does that actually spread? Yeah, Do you know on. what I mean? Yeah, it's a little bit harder. So you get a reputation in your little town or whatever the fuck. But you know, you like you're a few sluts around town. But no matter how hot you are, you're still comically inept in bed. So I mean, like you're gonna get a you're gonna get another that reputation is gonna spread too. Of like, he can't fuck for shit, girl. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to go with the attractive but horrible in bed. <laughs> it's just like my life now, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I'd probably go with the ugly one that could fuck like a beast. Well, at least you can, I, I just like that character arc better. You know what I mean? At least you yeah, can keep somebody happy. Um, would you rather double your intelligence or your penis size? Oh, that's easy. My intelligence, dude. My dick's big enough. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I wouldn't be able to carry this big old Palooza if I doubled in size. You know what I'm sure, saying? sure, Dude, Paul. Man, I doubled in size, man. Hang on, oh. much. If uh, it, yeah, go ahead. No, double intelligence seems like an easy pick here. If aliens landed and said they'd take you off the Earth to go see the galaxy, but they would treat you like their bitch and make you do all their tedious space chores, would you take the deal? Uh, yes. Fuck yeah, dude! No one, no one else gets like. What, what's what's the no option? The no option is I get to go forward in my life knowing I could have seen the fucking galaxy <laughs> and I chose not to. Yeah, Paul, you will walk, you will walk on the rings of Saturn, but you'll be our bitch. Like, all right, all right. <laughs> Last of the quickies here. Um, 
If you had to appoint one person other than yourself, dictator of the earth, who would you choose? They have to be a living person. Yeah. I can't resurrect somebody, a historical figure, and make them the leader. All right. I'll let you do that, too, but you got to answer living and uh, as well. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So you guys can both living, answer living uh, So I transfer p- all power in the universe to one person who's who's currently living. Well, one power, all all power on the earth, dictator all of the power, earth. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I know who I'd pick. Um, Noam Chomsky. <laughs> I just give Noam Chomsky the ultimate power over the world. That's a pretty good answer. Uh, my answer is Al Pacino. <laughs> Al oh Pacino. God. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkachino. <laughs> What's my name? Dunkachino. I just think that the fucking world would be so fucking crazy if Al Pacino was a dictator. I don't know why that popped in my head, but that's my answer. Say hello to my mocha blend. <laughs> Hideous. All right. Did you want to do a dead one, too, or is, are you good with that? Oh, a dead one? Oh, shit. Uh, oh, man. Bill Hicks. That's a good one. I'd give I'd give I'd give the keys uh, to Bill Hicks right now if he was fucking still alive. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, dude. I imagine he'd be a fucking he'd be, he'd be like the kind of dictator I would respect. Dude. We would all be involved in <laughs> slightly comedic murder plots and shit against everybody else. Around Sounds us. good to me. All right, now it's time for the ultimate. This is the greatest hypothetical question ever constructed. Holy shit! I'm ready. This is gonna be the finale. This one's called Don't Know Where, Don't Know Gwen. You go out to check the mail, but when you reach into your mailbox, you are inexplicably sucked into a portal that leads you to 100 years in the future. You are surprised to find over the course of several weeks that many of the global problems you thought would lead humanity to ruination were all somehow avoided, and the future is actually an amazing utopia. Poverty, racism, climate change, all the social ills that uh, plagued your time seem to have vanished. You learn that this is largely due to a series of sweeping social reforms passed uh, by a woman named Gwen Palmer, who was elected president in 2060. Scientists in the future who are familiar with your temporal displacement have found a way to send you back in time, but they are worried that you know too much. And so they don't want to send you back. As great as the future is, you do feel out of place in it. And you do wish to return to your own time. It takes some convincing, but eventually they relent and send you back to only a split second after you left, your hand still in the mailbox. You pull it out, you're holding a campaign ad for Gwen Palmer, who is running for state senate in your area. You recognize that it is the same Gwen Palmer who will be elected president in 40 years. But her campaign issues are horrible. She is young, but ultra conservative Republican whose campaign seems to be centered almost completely around repealing abortion rights and restoring family values and other such garbage. You know that she will one day become a great reformer uh, that fixes many of America's problems and creates a better society. But you decide that nonetheless, you cannot support her at this stage in her political career. So you go back inside your house and look for something to eat. You find that you have all the ingredients to make a grilled cheese sandwich, and so you do so, and it's really good. Forty years pass, and society gets worse and worse. You're an old man, miserable and decrepit. But for all the years, you've maintained some hope because you know that big changes are coming in 2060. But when the results of the 2060 election come back, socialist reformer Gwen Palmer loses by a razor slim margin to an ultra right wing demagogue named Brutus Devonovich. You realize that something you did must have altered the timeline and probably fucked any chance of society improving for the better. In despair, you die of a heart attack right in front of your holovision set, knowing that you doomed us all. When you arrive in the afterlife, a demonic imp named Randolph tells you that it was the grilled cheese sandwich you ate 40 years ago that ultimately doomed Palmer's campaign. You're incredulous at first, but he explains in meticulous detail the causal chain of events, and you see the nature of your error. And you wish for nothing more than to fix what you have done. Randolph offers you the chance to go back to Earth the moment before you made that grilled cheese sandwich. 
and you graciously accept his offer. However, the only other food available in the house is a bowl of grape nuts. Knowing that your grilled cheese sandwich will doom humanity, will you eat a disgusting bowl of grape nuts instead? Fuck humanity. Give me the grilled cheese, dude. <laughs> grape nuts? <laughs> no fucking way I can choke that shit down. The, fu- the planet's going to be fine. They're, like, they're going to figure it out after Gwen Palmer or whatever the fuck. I'm sure the fucking brutal dictator guy will do just fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a tough one. <laughs> On one hand, the survival and thriving of uh the human species in a utopia and on the other hand grape nuts <laughs> you know that's really what i'm struggling with so that grilled cheese sandwich is starting to look pretty fucking tasty but i've already been through it though at this point you got to remember i've already aged to an old man yeah that's true had a miserable life because everything just keeps getting worse and worse but there's nothing but grape nuts though there's nothing else in the house just the grape nuts and the stuff to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, couldn't you eat the stuff individually? You could always go to the store or something, but eh. I mean, who knows? I no, mean, right. I mean, like, yeah, who like? Let's just say that's off the table. Yeah, I mean, no one wants. There's no way. Yeah, no one I mean, wants like, to fucking. I'm trying to explain that, man. It's like it's the grape nuts or the grill. <laughs> it's the grilled cheese, and that's it. Right. That's what we got. Fuck, dude. I mean. And you can always have the gri- look. If you eat the grape nuts now and you get a little hungry later, you can still eat the grilled cheese sandwich. It won't cause the causal chain then. So you still could eat the sandwich, but you're hungry now, and you have to make a decision. You got to make a decision one way or the other. You can eat the grilled cheese or the grape nuts. You know, grilled cheese leads to fucking the you know uh, human you know humanity's decline and you know everything's destroyed. Grape nuts it leads to an eventual utopia. <sighs> <sighs> grape I mean, nuts though grape nuts you gotta I eat mean, a big old heap and bowl of those things too you know, everyone's gotta do their sacrifice they gotta make their fucking you gotta do what they gotta do I guess for the good of humanity this one time I'll eat the grilled cheese fuck them, <laughs> fuck them dude. I'll be old dead anyways <laughs> Yeah, because that grilled cheese is, lo- is looking pretty tasty it's a really good grilled cheese or not. and yeah I could delay gratification until later and just tied myself over with some grape nuts and have a grilled cheese later that night. But that would, you know, that'd mean I have to eat grape nuts right now, which no. <laughs> fuck, that, <dude. laughs> fuck humanity. They gave the, they gave this choice to the wrong motherfucker. Ah, so beautiful. I mean, it might be interesting to just choke down the grape nuts and see the alternate timeline, though. That's That's something I'm not considering. Because, you know, like it was a whole causal chain. So you would get a totally different 40 years if you ate that grape nuts. Right. You know, it might start off pretty much the same, but, it would. you know, you'd start to notice those causal changes mounting over time. So you might also know a lot of shit that was going to happen over the next 40 years. That's true. You'd have the benefit of some wisdom. Like Biff. That's true. I could get a hold of the fucking sports almanac. You could do that either way, though. And in fact, you'd have a better idea of what's going to happen if you ate the grilled cheese sandwich, because then the timeline would be unaltered from the one you already experienced. So, right. I think, yeah, I eat the sandwich. I eat the sandwich and become King Biff, dude. I have my own fucking casino. (laughs) I got the penthouse at the top. I wear a red smoking jacket everywhere. You know what I mean? I love it. Why the fuck not, dude? (laughs) I fucking love it. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, that's uh, that's all the hypotheticals I got. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed seeing how these uh, these fucking crazy fucks reacted to these crazy things. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if you liked it, let us know. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, follow us on, uh, you know, you subscribe to our YouTube channels, hit those stupid fucking alert bells, do all that bullshit. And, uh, you know, if you guys like our show, we got a shit ton of shit that's exclusive to our patrons. So. It's always a good idea to join that Pessimist Productions Patreon, man. Yeah, we actually counted, and it was on the nose a shit ton. Yeah, it was one whole shit ton, and we're working on it. We're basically working on our second shit ton at this point. Right, yeah. These are like, what's a ton? We're talking about a metric shit ton. So So you guys understand that. So check it out. It's all down there in the description, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. 
Deep bad fight. Deep bad fight. 